first Perry Regatta for Tommy and Preston. This is their first time going upwind. We do have them set up in a light air setting. You can see their boom is quite high. That's to power up the jib. The rake's forward. The boom indicates that the rake's forward. Also, with the rake forward, the main sheet pulls up and down on the boom more than when the mast is raked back. But mostly it's a change to the jib. Raking forward closes the leech of the jib more, powers you up. When it's windy, we open the leech of the jib if we can by moving the pins down. Okay, over there is one, oh, one, five, Crew Fritch, Coronado High School senior, San Diego Junior Yachtsman of the Year this year. He has crewing for him Max Olson, who is a B Fleet 7. They are also in their light air setting. You're going to see the boom very high. And you're going to see his jib sheet. I don't know if you can see it from here, but his jib sheet is pulling very much down on the jib. You'll see the angle is quite steep angle on that jib sheet. Crew and Max. So, first warning is going to be in about 20 minutes. Stella and Sam in boat nine. Sam's never raced a spinnaker regatta before. Stella is experienced Sabbat squad member. This year will be her last Sabbat national. She'll be a freshman in high school, and we're going to focus on 420s and high school sailing in her freshman year. Next year, she's an eighth grader actually now. So after nationals, she'll be... Okay, so they're going upwind now. The goal right now is to get the spinnaker up to check it, practice. They just learned the spinnaker last week. Uh, Crew and Mac should do very well with the spinnaker. Crew's been in the top of the Perry series two or three years. Uh, near the top, top five. Perry Regatta Coronado, four to six knots, South San Diego Bay, 41, I think, 40 C420s. There's an SAT today that's impacting. There's also a SoCal Regatta. In California, we have practice high school regattas, and there's one of those going on at BCYC. That's got 50-something boats going. This will probably be a general recall. The current has just switched a couple hours ago, or hour and a half ago. Low tide is going to be at 4 o'clock today. That's going to be in four hours. So the tide's been switched for a couple. This is going to be a general recall. These are going to be really hard starts to, to get off. Let's just pick a boat and see. You can see the mass going. I look at 10153 and I think their angle is quite good. I think the pin is definitely favored. So these guys might look okay right here, but those guys are further upwind. 10153 is set up definitely in light air setting. Everybody's gonna keep practicing here. This is their chance to speed test. You don't wanna just turn around right away in every general recall. You wanna keep racing and see if you can. Nice job, Tommy. Five, six, nine, three, right there. Race one, Coronado Yacht Club, Perry Series, December 2018. So this is the second of four Perrys. This series will have 32 races approximately. You discard a certain number depending on how many. They usually get 32 in for the year, the four different venues. So kind of the best venues, Coronado, Long Beach, San Diego, and Cabrillo Beach, the best one in September every year. Okay, we're trying to find our guys. We can see different boom heights on some boats. Some people start with the Vang on. This light air, it doesn't really matter. I'd have the Vang snug. 
I don't really want the boom rising too much in the puffs. This is a pretty solid five knots. There's Stella right there. So this is Stella's first 420 regatta ever. Wow, this is going to be a long video. <laughs> yep. Yep, so people breaking the one minute rule. This is good. Race committee Sean Powell's yelling at people now. That gives everybody a gauge of where the line is. And you can see some of these kids don't know what to do. They need to round an end. They don't get a lot of experience with it because they get explained to it all the time, but then they, they don't end up doing it. Telltale's look. Body position to get to be maybe the bows out of the water a little. I'd slide them both forward an inch or two. Okay. This is gonna take a while. Looking towards Mexico there. This is a U-flag start. That guy has a lot of guts right there. He thinks he can just round an end and be good was a big mistake so if this starts happens he's done here's Tommy committee boat ends a little risky and outgoing tide so you got to remember the tide is going from our face in going towards us so it's lifting him in but he has enough space in there so it's working out fine and just jumped across too quickly. Race one, good job getting a start and getting into clear wind. is much further out. Sam, oh, there he goes. Now he's starting to move up. In these conditions, it's okay to have the skipper hiking and the crew not moving. As soon as we get more wind in this and we're changing modes where we're going up in the flat spots and gaining speed in the chop, the crew will do most of the work. But in these conditions, it's okay to have the crew barely moving and let the skipper correct. But she is in bad air. Not bad for her first 420 race of her life. Old Pacific class. Okay, we'll see that American flag kite a lot today. This is the guy we're trying to emulate. Okay, so what we're looking for here is where's his boom, where's his jib, where's his crew sitting. Looks like Crew Fridge and Max are coming around in 5th, 1015, just put the kite up there. Max Olsen, his first 420 race of his life crewing. Okay, so you can see Jack's, the tack of his spinnaker slightly higher than the clue. So the guy side is slightly higher than clue, but essentially even. Jib is very loose, main is very loose. And heel to lure just the tiniest bit. Trying to drive here. Just got my coach boat working again and trying to drive here and do video. Everybody in the top five healed to leeward slightly. Crew healed to leeward more. There's Max.
Crew and Max are right down in there in about fifth, right there. Looking great. Okay, Tommy's gonna be in a pack. Tommy's right there, didn't take the bait. Little over trimmed right there, need a bigger curl. Spinnaker is hiding behind the main. He's gotta get that sheet going out. Over trimmed. There you go, look at that. Sam's never flown a spinnaker before a week ago. First Club 420 race for Stella. First race for Sam. I think he's done an FJ race, FJ regatta once, without a spinnaker. <laughs> Excellent. Looks really good. Pretty cool. Let's see if they can get around the lured gates and to the finish in this place. They're gonna thread the needle. 10 meter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Beating some good people, girl. Okay, four or five knots. You're gonna see that the spinnaker's floating way in front of the boat. Tiny bit of heel to leeward. And it's just, you can't see the curl from here, but the top is curling. Everyone, yep, there it is, trim the sheet. See how it's just floating out there perfectly. Crew never looks down. Now it looks like the buoys um, just look like the one on the right there is further upwind, but I'll be able to tell. When they exit the buoy, I'll be able to look at them and decide which tack. Oh, yep, he's going to the right buoy here maybe. Nope, he's coming to the one in front of me. The skipper has the spinnaker right now. Pull off. Pull the spinnaker around. Yep, just like that. So port tack is parallel to the gates. He's going that way and the buoys are essentially pretty darn parallel. They're not going through the buoys very sharp. If she was really lifted right there and going way up, then the other buoy would be further upwind, but this definitely is further up. If we're parallel to the gates on port tack close hauled, then this gate is favored. Now we'll see if Sam knows what to do. He's never really been taught anything but a windward takedown. Oh, there he goes. He got it. <laughs> nice. On our way to the finish. I mean, that's pretty impressive, girl. You rounded behind both these two boats. We've got a little bit of a feel for upwind. Nice job. See how close you are to her. She rounded two, three boat lengths ahead of you and you're almost ducking. Very good. And you should keep on coming. The committee boat's up there, but I would come in a little bit further before I tack. I just get a little more space. Good job. And then a huge roll tack and you could be to the end of race one, I don't know if you can tell, but the orange flag is blowing from our right to our left. So that means a wind shift. So starboard tack is lifted. A lot of these boats on port tack across here are struggling on port. And here you are right here, kind of trucking. So you're gonna probably beat one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight boats now instead of only five, a gain of about three. Yeah, orange flag blowing well from the right. Awesome. 